this will be a bit of a different talk than everything that has happened so far, um, more on the application side of things. Um, so my name is Aristotle Martin. I'm a graduate student at Duke University in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, um, advised by Professor Amanda Randalls. And I'm going to be giving a talk on a paper I recently co-authored with Daniel Polari, uh, titled Distributed, yeah, Distributed Acceleration of uh, Adhesive Dynamic Simulations. So we'll get into some background. Before I get into the meat of the presentation, I just want to give you guys a high-level overview of some of the biological processes that are relevant to the work here, uh, mainly that being uh, a process called cell adhesion. And uh, what this really is, is a process in which uh, biological cells um, will form mechanical, mechanical connections with a substrate. I can get my, um, let me get like a pointer real quick. Uh, that'll be more helpful. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, what happens is uh, cells form mechanical connections with a, a substrate or a surface. So, for example, here, this single cell um, has uh, proteins on its surface called ligands that interact with uh, receptors that are expressed by the, the endothelium in this example on the substrate. And um, this process plays uh, an important role in uh, cells binding to other cells, um, as well as uh, parts of their environment. Um, it, it plays a role in a lot of biological applications, immune cell trafficking, cancer cell migration. Here we have an example of a blood clot formation where we have um, adhesion uh, mediated by uh, platelets. And so the main motivating application in our case was a tumor metastasis uh, where we have uh, a cluster or a single um, circulating tumor cell that's in the bloodstream that broke off from a primary tumor site and uh, it travels downstream. And then once it reaches the capillaries, so like here where the vessel narrows, um, what happens is that cell will form adhesive contacts uh, with, the, with the vessel, with the receptors on the endothelium. And that's very important because from there it arrests and then it will um, invade the new tissue. And so something else we can see from this is that in order to eventually be able to predict metastatic trajectory, um, we need to understand how adhesive interactions interact with variables like uh, blood flow velocity, uh, vessel topology, and things like cell deformability. Okay, so why do we care about computation or specifically distributed computation for this example? Well, um, studies of cell adhesive phenomena in a wet lab setting um, are difficult to perform uh, due to some of the variables that I alluded to earlier. Uh, so the interactions between like say fluid velocity, uh, vessel topology or cell deformability um, among other factors, uh, these are just difficult to isolate the effects of these individually. Um, in a wet lab setting. So computational models um, provide a well-controlled platform uh, serving as a good alternative for a study like this, um, but they come at the expense of being very resource intensive. Um, so specifically in the case of adhesive dynamic simulations uh, or just AD for short, uh, these require submicron resolution grids uh, for, interact, for being able to explicitly resolve um, ligand receptor interactions. Uh, nanosecond timescales equating to millions of time steps for just a small scale simulation. And of course, this all adds up to terabytes of storage. So we can see here that in order to perform physiologically relevant simulations, uh, we require efficient usage of large distributed resources. Uh, there is a, a substantial body of literature currently on using computation to study adhesive dynamics phenomena. However, previous works have been uh, restricted to simulating one or a handful of adhesive cells and mostly small idealized geometries, so flat planes or small micro channels uh, whose dimensions are on the order of the cell diameter. And so we need techniques uh, to be able to simulate many more adhesive cells simultaneously because that's where you get the interesting biology uh, occurring at. And so that leads into our goals, uh, which were to enable large field of view, high resolution adhesive cell simulations that uh, better recapitulate the microvascular environment. And, and in doing so, uh, we were seeking to broaden the applicability of these kinds of simulations uh, to a larger range of problems. Um, so for example, going back to that circulating tumor example, being able to maybe observe a circulating tumor uh, as it traverses a, a capillary bed or for medical device design. Um, and an added benefit would be to facilitate high throughput studies and by which I mean that uh, for a single adhesive dynamic simulation, it could be very time consuming and so, of course, in a scientific experiment, you don't just perform one trial, you perform many trials. And this is the same thing for computation. And so if we could really lower the time to solution for these simulations, we could facilitate these kinds of studies. 
So this diagram gives a high-level overview of the multi-scale, multi-physics um, methodology that are that that we used um, to approach this problem. And so from the right side of the figure, uh, we start at sort of the bird's eye view of the coarsest level, uh, where we are looking at just bulk fluid flow. Uh, and here in this domain, we are looking at millimeters uh, or centimeters for larger vessels. And, and for this approach, we use a technique called the last Bolton method for the fluid dynamics. Uh, going one step down further into the micron region, we're looking at individual cells. And in order to resolve the forces uh, due to deformations in these cells, we use a technique called the finite element method. And then one step further, going down to the submicron regime, where we are most interested for this paper, uh, we explicitly resolve the interactions between the uh, ligands on the cell surface and the receptors. And this is uh, the adhesive dynamics portion of it. And so over the next few slides, I'm going to explain briefly some of these different methods and ultimately how we bridge all these together because that's what we need to do in order for this to all work. And so um, at the highest level, at the bulk fluid level, um, we use a method called the last Boltzmann method, um, which is an alternative to the Navier-Stokes uh, equations of fluid dynamics. Um, it basically operates in a regime in between the micro scale, so like MD simulations, in between like macro scale, so think like airfoil experiments. Um, and so it's, it's based in like kinetic theory. So uh, what it basically operates on is this idea of, of, of having a Cartesian lattice where you simulate particles moving about that lattice. And these particles are fictitious in that they represent distributions of particles. And so this variable here, F, is actually a, a particle distribution function. And uh, there's two main operations with the last Fulton method, which are the streaming operation. So we see in this diagram here, uh, during streaming, what we do is we quite literally stream particles uh, from a given lattice site to their neighboring lattice sites along discrete velocity directions. And then the collision process, which is nonlinear, occurs locally. And so the last Boltzmann method is actually really nice for parallelization because of this nice uh, stencil structure. Um, and for variables that we care about for a simulation, which would be like fluid velocity and density, there's a really nice and easy way to convert from the particle distribution function to these variables. So for simulating cells, um, we use the finite element method, which is a very commonly used technique, or we just treat cells as membranes enclosing fluid, uh, where these membranes are discretized uh, through triangular elements over which we, we loop over those triangles um, or we parallelize them, um, and we compute the forces arising from deformations locally on those triangles. And according to certain constitutive laws, so in this case, the Scalac constitutive law, and then we, we uh, enforce other uh, constraints such as volume penalties. And so I've discussed so far how we um, simulate cells and how we simulate fluid, um, but I haven't really talked about how we couple those things together because so here on the left, uh, the fluid operates on sort of a fixed Cartesian grid um, and cells which are moving about uh, within the fluid, um, they, they are uh, discretized using a Lagrangian mesh. And so they don't really interface directly and we need a technique to connect those together. And so we use something called the immersed boundary method to accomplish this. And what it really boils down to is just that. It's just an interface uh, between the cell, which is immersed in the fluid, uh, hence immersed body. Um, and there's two operations that really describe this, which are the interpolation. And so right here, uh, we can imagine that taking a fluid point um, and we interpolate that fluid velocity, velocity onto the nearby um, cell uh, vertex points. And then we use those uh, that velocity that we've interpolated onto the cell to update the positions of those vertices, which lead to deformations. Then we go back to the finite element method, compute what those forces are, and then spread those forces back onto the fluid, injecting that back into the last Boltzmann equations. And then we just repeat this cycle during every time step. And then lastly, at the submicron regime, we have the adhesive dynamics model, which we are most concerned with. Um, and this is a fairly simple model. It's really just a stochastic, uh, uh, scheme for uh, modeling the rupturing and formation of adhesive bonds, which you treat as uh, mechanical springs. And um, we have these different kinetic rates for um, which are modulated by an applied force for determining how likely a bond is to form or break during a given time step. And so all these methods um, were uh, developed and, and incorporated into Harvey, our lab's in-house massively parallel multi-physics solver. Um, which has been used for uh, many applications so far, largely cardiovascular simulations, as well as many 
uh, fluid structure interactions with cells. Um, so just to put that into more context, Harvey in 2015 was a Gordon Bell uh, finalist uh, for some work on uh, the IV and blue gene Q. Uh, it scaled to one and a half million cores uh, at a uh, on the full human uh, systemic arterial geometry I showed in the previous slide at a 20 micron grid resolution. Um, Harvey has also been shown to scale to millions of deformable red blood cells using GPUs on the Summit supercomputer. So going back here, uh, this was, I think, about 17 million uh, red blood cells that we were simulating at a physiological hematocrit or cell densities uh, mimicking the human body. Um, so our code is written in C++ uh, with OpenMP for CPU threading and MPI for distributed parallelization. Um, we performed simulations on two different systems in this work. Uh, the first being the Duke Compute Cluster, which is just a small scale cluster that we have access to on campus. Um, and then, of course, as well as the uh, Oak Ridge National Lab uh, Summit Supercomputer. Um, I won't go into all the details here. These are just here for your information about the descriptions of what the nodes look like on these systems. I think everyone here or most of everyone is familiar with Summit. Um, so I could just provide a little bit of information about the Duke Compute Cluster. Um, it uses uh, two Intel Xeon processors uh, totaling 40 40 cores per node. Um, it has an infinite band network of seven gigabytes per second. And for compiling our code, we use the uh, Intel C++ compiler classic in the Intel MPI library uh, version 2019. And so this is a 10,000 foot view of our overall algorithm, uh, which I'm going to be explaining uh, how we use this uh, to simulate adhesive cells over the following slides. So this is a depiction of our hybrid parallel scheme that we um, incorporated into Harvey for this work. Um, so we can see here these dotted lines or dashed lines. Uh, these indicate task boundaries between MPI tasks. And we can see that cells are distributed according to their centroids. And so uh, a given MPI task will have, uh, it'll have to work on all the cells falling within its domain. And then more of a fine grained parallelism is implemented at the level of individual cell vertices where we use threading at that, at that scale. Um, on the uh, more about the MPI side of things, um, the fluid domain uh, is decomposed and load balanced using a recursive load uh, bisection algorithm. And uh, so we can see here in this example, um, the different uh, task boundaries are shown, uh, different colors correspond to different uh, tasks. And um, just like with many other types of scientific simulations, uh, adjacent MPI tasks are connected through a halo exchange. Um, so for example, this uh, dotted line here shows the halo uh, uh, region that, that uh, is associated with the task with the green cells. Um, and like I kind of alluded to in the previous slide, MPI tasks will perform computations on all of the cells falling within its domain. And similarly to uh, having halo exchange with uh, the fluid, we also have a similar thing going on with cells. So cell data is also synchronized through a form of halo exchange. Um, so concerning single node optimizations, uh, we had several routines uh, in our adhesive dynamics code, as well as our finite element routines that were accelerated using OpenMP threading on a per vertex basis. Uh, these represented areas that were either easy to parallelize or required synchronization of many smaller units. And those smaller units, I mean, so in this diagram here on the right, I'm, re I'm referring to the ligands uh, shown as the red circles in this visualization on the cell surface. So these represented a good opportunity to use shared memory parallelism here. Um, we made a space versus time trade-off uh, to avoid race conditions with our threads. And so what I mean by that is we allocated enough memory space uh, for each thread to individually store its solution to a given problem. And then we would later coalesce those solutions together in serial. Um, and so an example of a routine where this came up was the adhesive bond formation routine, which will come up again in a future slide. Um, so these are the results of our thread scaling on a single node uh, on the left of the Duke compute cluster on the right of the Summit supercomputer. Um, so there's three lines here, and the, 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 the top line is the overall simulation loop time. And of course, this is a function of number of threads. Uh, the middle line or the orange line is uh, the uh, finite element method. And then the bottom line here um, is the uh, time just due to the adhesion routines. And so we can see that um, over, I guess on the DCC, we uh, simulate on up to 40 threads. And so over the course of this, we got about an order of magnitude decrease in uh, simulation time. Um, and there's a similar story on the Summit supercomputer. Um, although you will see a slight difference between the two when you get to high thread counts, um, it flattens out a bit on the DCC 
uh, relative to summit. And uh, we believe this is due to uh, bandwidth limitations on the DCC um, relative to what was uh, available on summit. And so additionally, we made some optimizations uh, with data structures, uh, specifically uh, employing uh, spatial data structures like the octree, like what we did here. Um, and this was relevant for the adhesive bond formation routine that I mentioned earlier, uh, which is one of the most computationally intensive uh, routines of our algorithm, because for a given ligand on the cell surface, what it does is it searches for all the possible nearby wall receptors uh, that are available to bind. And so a naive all-to-all -all radio search will give you a polynomial time complexity. And so what we did, we, we implemented an octree data structure, uh, which cut it down to uh, logarithmic time, where we have a visualization of the octree on the left. And here on the right with this figure, we can see that just by implementing the octree, we achieved a true order of magnitude speed up in the AD operations. So pretty, pretty massive gains uh, just from using optimal data structure for fast lookup of our wall receptors. Uh, here we have the strong scaling performance on both the Duke Compute Cluster as well as Summit um, for our overall program. And uh, so we're looking at a node granularity. So on the left, we see for the DCC, we went from one to 32 nodes for about 1,200 cores, uh, achieving about a 12 times speed up for a 32-fold increase in resources. And then on Summit, the reason why we have two lines is because I believe the one to the left uh, represented about 40 adhesive cells that were in that simulation. And then on the right, we actually had about 160 adhesive cells. To put that into context, uh, the previous state of the art uh, for adhesive cells simulated like around 10 cells. So this was definitely an order of magnitude increase over that. Um, and we achieved about a 45 speed up for a 128 fold increase in resources. Uh, you might be wondering why we started off at four nodes in this case for this line rather than starting at one node. And the reason for that was we just couldn't fit uh, the simulation in memory unless we started with, with that node count. And so uh, to show how we could use our hybrid parallel scheme uh, to apply adhesive dynamic simulations to larger geometries, um, we performed a simulation of, of several adhesive cells on a large microvascular network, uh, which could represent like a microfluidic device for sorting uh, cells by metastatic propensity, for example. Um, and uh, this contained over 100 million fluid points. Um, and we were simulating at a 0.15 micron resolution for this. And um, we can see here, like at the inset, uh, you can see this uh, cell at this time step forming uh, bonds with the substrate, just as an example. And so uh, what this basically showed us was that we could, this is more like a proof of concept. Uh, we, we could apply these to larger scale prongs, which is what we wanted. Uh, so some of the current limitations. Um, so in order to ensure reproducibility across task counts, uh, we serialized certain uh, stochastic uh, operations in our code. Um, and so as I think everyone here knows, um, when, you're, when you're solving a particular problem, um, often if you're not careful when you have stochastic operations, when you change the task count, um, you also change the solution. And so uh, to avoid that issue, we, we kind of took a brute force, brute force approach where we um, have a root task that's handling the instantiation of all the wall receptors um, and then broadcasting that to all the other tasks during the setup uh, procedure. And that way the receptors are always instantiated in the same order, which is important for our overall algorithm. Um, the downside of this, that this, this could lead to long setup times for large domains. So like physiologically relevant sized vessels. And so maybe a remedy for this would be to have ranks accessing blocks of random numbers in parallel. Um, so and we could be looking into that in the future. Um, also, although we have run Harvey on GPUs previously with non-adhesive cells, as I showed earlier, um, our AD code is not currently implemented for GPUs. And so uh, there are future plans to accelerate um, our AD routines uh, with GPU kernels so that we could fully leverage the resources on heterogeneous architectures like uh, Summit. Um, but in conclusion, we developed a hybrid multi-scale method uh, for simulating adhesive cells and complex geometries. Uh, that leverages um, heterogeneous compute resources, both on-node and uh, distributed resources. Um, and our model breaks new ground in terms of simulation size, in this case, just in terms of the sheer number of adhesive cells we've been able to simulate uh, simultaneously. And this will facilitate uh, further scientific investigations into a new class of problems. So that's all I have.
Questions, folks? Uh, so the paper was interesting, but I think one thing, uh, well, actually, the um, what you brought about GPUs at the end was also interesting. So the cell FM part of your uh, application, the Harvey part, was originally just pure MPI, right? Yeah. And then because the uh, adhesion model was basically going to be very difficult to do with MPI, right? Right. So you had the case where you, where now you wanted to have just like one MPI rank per node to run both the cell FM and the uh, adhesion model, right? Yeah, yeah, one MPI rank okay. per node. So yeah. what were the big challenges? You sort of alluded, but um, maybe were there things that were particularly difficult to convert from an MPI only to OpenMP plus MPI for the cell FM part of the code? Um, and then I have another question. Okay, um, for the first question, I would say it wasn't, like conceptually, it wasn't incredibly difficult because we had already implemented cells into Harvey, but they were just non-adhesive cells. And so we already had it set up so that for a given MPI task, we had a certain set of cells that it was always managing. And so it was really more of like zooming in further on those cells and having to worry about fine grain parallelism for the receptors and resolving those. And so I would say um, that wasn't too challenging, just deciding how we wanted to assign tasks uh, to single nodes and that sort of thing. Does the cell FM by itself run better in hybrid mode or um, is it better to be pure MPI for cell FM? Uh, we haven't tried it on pure MPI. <laughs> okay. um, I think we just defaulted to using threading on the cell FM. Um, but that's a good question. And would that be difficult to get running on the GPU too? Or would you go back into a split mode where you're running uh, the cell FM component on, this, on the scalar processors and then mm -hmm. do the adhesion offload onto the GPUs? Um, that's definitely something we'd like to do. Um, and actually we have a separate project that's relevant to this where we do some offloading onto GPUs and then we handle the fluid stuff on the CPU. Um, but we just haven't implemented the adhesive dynamics model on the GPU. It's really interesting talk. Um, is there anything from the MPI side that you wish you had or any, or what, did you identify any bottlenecks where um, MPI was kind of in the way of achieving good performance? Um, honestly, I don't think uh, MPI was ever an issue for us because we're very memory bound. Um, so I think our limitations are really just hardware constraints with memory bandwidth, to be honest. Yeah. I have a good question. Um, so actually it's a two part question. I think uh, Howard uh, hit upon some of those. So assuming that now you know you're going to move this to the GPU. Yeah. What are the challenges that you see in terms of you know restructuring your code to run on the GPU? Mm -hmm. And related to that, what more um, biological phenomena can you now exploit? once you're able to move the computation to the GPU that you're currently not able to do, because you're going to get a lot more. You know, yeah. Computation. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Good questions. Um, so as far as challenges with uh, offloading some of this on the GPUs, I think some of the biggest challenges will involve um, trying to overlap uh, computation and communication between the host processor and the GPUs, always trying to feed those machines, I guess. Um, that'll probably be the main challenge, honestly, for our situation. And then as far as uh, biological applications, um, well, I guess uh, I, would, I was talking a lot about tumor metastasis um, right now. Um, that's a big problem that we're concerned with the, with our lab. And so if we implemented an AED model, what we'd like to do in the long run is have like a circulating tumor cluster. We could follow that through like a large, like a large region of the human body, which you really can't do right now. Um, so that, that's kind of where we see things going. Any other question, folks? Hello. Uh, you mentioned that you were using tasking um, on as a node level parallelism. Did you use any advanced tasking features, let's say from OpenMP 5.0 or 4.5, such as data flow, maybe, um, in order to co coordinate um, the task tasks among themselves? 
So are you talking about advanced features for coordinating threads? You're saying OpenMP threads or MPI? Sorry. Uh, OpenMP tasks uh, that you, I think, mentioned. You mentioned tasks, I believe. Okay. Um, on the OpenMP side, I think uh, it wasn't too complex because we did the, um, the trade-off with the, the memory, just, just using a large region of memory for each uh, thread so that we don't have to worry about any race conditions. Um, so really it was uh, the, the process that I was talking about earlier with the adhesive bond formation routine. We kind of just convert that to an embarrassingly parallel problem to apply OpenMP to. So, so far we haven't had anything too complicated on that side. Thank you. You guys don't use open tasks. Oh, oh, task, open P tasks. Sorry, we're using open P threads. Sorry. Yeah, um, actually, uh, part of ongoing work is uh, investigating performance models so we can figure out sort of the optimal configurations with choosing just between the different communication routes between like GPU and GPU. Um, we do currently, uh, within other aspects of the code, we have um, uh, direct GPU to GPU communication enabled. So if we're running on Summit, we can detect that and we could turn that off if we want to. Um, but we haven't really figured out what are the optimal ways to exploit that. And so that's just kind of ongoing investigations. Great talk. Thank you. Uh, thanks. A round of applause. For